Hey, amazing Love Church family. Uh, we are continuing peace through the pandemic and we're considering various practices to implement. And today, the Sunday afternoon, we're talking about giving thanks. So I need to ask you, uh, what are you thankful for, uh, even though it's an unexpected time? What comes to your mind? Thanks is so important uh, that researchers have found the effect it can have over our brains and our attitudes. A while back, Noelle Nelson published a book called The Power of Everyday Appreciation, and she conducted a brain scan. The first scan was when she was thinking about all the things she was thankful for, when she was thinking of what she appreciated. And after 30 minutes of filling her mind with all of these things, the scan showed a very healthy brain. But then for the next half an hour, she thought of everything she was afraid of. She thought of all those big things that could happen in her life, all of her disappointments. And actually her cognitive activity slowed down and the scan showed a very unhealthy brain, as you might imagine. Other studies have been done. Yale did some research on veterans who were aged 60 to 96. And they found that those who were doing well had two things going for them. Uh, number one, they had a purpose for life. And number two, they're grateful. Now, beyond the physiological side of things, if, if that wasn't enough, if, if I could tell you that, uh, again, a common cure to depression is gratitude, uh, God actually encourages us to give thanks. In fact, what I wanted to share with you is what I think is the most helpful section of scripture if you're struggling with mental health. The most helpful area of scripture, again, if you're struggling with anything related to anxiety or depression, man, you need to really soak up these words. It's Philippians chapter four. Let me set the context. Some call Philippians the most joyful book in the Bible. Written by Paul, giving thanks for all the Philippian Christians had done. And, and it's written in jail. It's written while he's on house arrest and his circumstances aren't so good. And yet in all these things, he writes about joy. Philippians 4 verse 4 starts out by saying this, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. How often should we have joy in our hearts? Paul would say every day, no matter the circumstance. COVID-19, I'm feeling good, I'm not feeling good. We can have joy in the Lord. Now, joy is different than happiness, I, I would grant you, um, and, and that's a discussion for a different day, uh, but, but joy in deep-seated things of the Lord. It goes on to say, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. With thanksgiving, present all the things that are on your mind, all the things that would worry you or, or create anxiety. In fact, I remember when my bride, my resident theologian, taught me about uh, Monday, Thursday. And she was struck by the fact that after Jesus broke the bread, what did he do? You, you might just gloss over it. He gave thanks. Even though the next day was Good Friday, even though the next day he'd give his life as he broke bread, he gives thanks. How wonderful it is to do. But you may know that this is not something that comes innately to us. It's not always easy to be thankful. In fact, I'm reminded of the Old Testament Israelites. Uh, maybe you know this story. They were rescued from Egypt, where they were slaves. That can't be good. They were rescued through 10 incredible plagues, and then they were brought through the Red Sea on dry ground, and, and God swept that army up in the sea, and, and they were safe. God had promised them a new land, the land of Canaan, flowing with milk and honey and all sorts of good things. And yet when they had a little bit of struggle, when they didn't know when the next meal came from, look at what scripture records. It's in Exodus chapter 16, where they said, verse 3, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate food all we wanted. But you brought us out into the desert to starve this entire assembly to death. They were looking back at the glory days of being a slave. That doesn't make a lot of sense. But it does remind us that gratitude does not come easy. 
In fact, I wonder when it comes to our prayer life, how often is God uh, hearing, give me and give me and bless me and bless me, how often do we then return in thanks for all that he's granted? In fact, uh, today we talked about uh, leprosy at church and uh, reminds me of, you know, if you'd have COVID-19 and how separated you have to be. And when God healed those lepers and made their dreams come true and they could return to their families, um, how many came to give thanks to God? Just one, 10%. That's not a good percentage of gratitude. So God reminds us, give thanks. In fact, you might know that because salvation is not up to us, we can't add to the finished work of Christ. The only thing we can do is thank God with our lives, with how we act and what we do. We can't add to salvation, but we can live a life of thanks. And so God says, you know what? Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. I think one of the greatest things that is noble and lovely and admirable is God. God and what he's up to right now. Is he still in control right now? What is lovely and admirable, the spiritual blessings that cannot be taken away, the forgiveness of sins, Eternal life in heaven, the presence of God and his help no matter the circumstance which he promises to give. We can give thanks in healthy and unhealthy days during COVID-19 and beyond, knowing that God has these blessings for us every day that we live. So what are you going to do to implement thanks? You know, there are a lot of different ideas. Uh, one idea is to have a mason jar and every time a good thing happens to write a note on it and, uh, and just remember what date it was that you were thankful and what you were thankful for. If you're a journaler, another thing you can do is uh, journal about your thanks. But I need to call some helpers over and my helpers are going to uh, show us uh, a little bit of the Bloomer household. So I need you to introduce you to my family. Um, here I have uh, Miss Bella. I have... Miss Nadia, I have Catherine, and the go-around discussion um, at supper time is usually, uh, you know, what's your favorite part of the day? Um, but today we're doing a COVID-19 special, and we are saying, what is the thing we're thankful for during COVID-19? All right, so here we go. Uh, Bella, can you start us off? What are you thankful for? Well, for starters, I am very thankful that in the middle of doing homework, I'm able to eat snacks whenever I want to. That was not a thing when I was in school, but I can just get up and go to the pantry at any time. But besides that, I also enjoy the family aspect, which is so much more great now. Like, I can just get up and watch a movie with my family at night when before I would be worried about homework. I can go as, as, on as many walks as I want to with my mom and dad. And it's amazing how much more we're, we've been able to bond throughout these past days. Awesome, Bella. Great job. <laughs> Noodle, what about you? What are you thankful for? Uh, I'm thankful for family that I can play games with them. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. All right, Mom. What about um, you? Even though Dustin and I... So work and the girls still have e-learning. I'm thankful that our schedule is much more relaxed. Absolutely, absolutely. What am I thankful for? It's, it's these characters, my girls, and um, also thankful for a church family. Uh, today when everything got done, uh, some very kind angel came in and gave me a whole box of these. Thank you, Leslie Bussey. Uh, and, and not only that, but we have some amazing church swag. Yeah, do you see it? Do you see it? Pick Jesus. Spread the sriracha, Jesus. There we go. Thank you, Potempa <laughs> family, and, and for those who provided this wonderful church swag. Um, and, and, and most of all, um, just this time together, that we know who's in charge. We know who loves us and is with us. He's the same God who's with you, loves you more than you possibly know, Mo loves you more than you possibly know. Uh, so let's join and give them thanks. You ready, girls? Yes. I'll, I'll say the prayer, okay? All right. All right. So Heavenly Father, you are good. You've always been good. You don't know how to be bad. And thank you for giving us continually perfect gifts that come from, from you. Uh, Lord, thank you for our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins and our eternal spot by you. Uh, thank you that you've uh, placed us in, in relationship with other people. Um, and I pray for those who may be feeling more isolated right now that you'd comfort them with your presence. I pray for those who are sick right now, especially John Krug, that you would heal him and be with him. Um, but Lord, thank you um, that you are gracious in spite of all that we go through, that you're in control right now. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. 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 Thanks all. Bye. Thank you.